Folks, the all new Bentley GTC that we're about to drive is possibly the ultimate in British Grand Touring. It's certainly about to be one of my favorites. And this video is brought to you by Carl Friedrich. If you're gonna go on an elegant Grand Tour, get some elegant Grand Touring gear. I'm talking about the key organizer and the carry-on. The carry-on, rugged aluminum frame, four-wheel design, nice and light, durable, and it holds a battery with an iPhone USB port. It's pretty good stuff. And the key organizer, Italian leather, lifetime warranty, like a Swiss army knife for your keys. Or if you wanted to do it kind of like taco style, you could maybe get like a Bentley fob in there as well. More importantly, think about the leather in this vehicle. Think about the kind of pants you're gonna be wearing on the Grand Tour, folks. Don't ruin them with keys. Get that key organizer, get that carry on. Get your grand tour on, and we want to thank Carl Friedrich for sponsoring this video. Now, enjoy the review of the 2021 Bentley GTC. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful uh, but blustery day up here on top of the mountain. And wow, what a fabulous machine do we have to play with this morning. This is the 2021 Bentley Continental GTC First Edition. What is the first edition, you might want to know, because it costs $48,000. Um, I can't really tell. I looked all over the internet. It pretty much seems like uh, a special interior treatment that has some flags, uh, some Union Jacks with number one on it, some extra badging, and then a certain color combination. I don't know about that, but the Bentley GTC is fabulous in so many ways. Uh, this one is a V8, comes in a coupe and convertible V8 or W12. Uh, my probable favorite would be the V8 coupe um, because it's the lightest and most agile. The V8 is the four liter twin turbo uh, hot V design. Same, you, uh, same, I don't wanna say the same, but similar to what you would get with a Panamera turbo or an Urus. Uh, in this trim, it makes 542 horsepower, 568 pound-feet of torque. That's a bunch. Uh, and this thing weighs 5,313 pounds, also a bunch, but, <clears throat> You can see where the weight goes. No one buys a Bentley for it to be light. In fact, kind of the opposite is true. You want to buy a Bentley that feels heavy, luxurious, dense, rich, uh, things that are really associated with luxury. So 225,000 is the base price for this one here, uh, but this one has 75K in options, including the, uh, the aforementioned first edition package. It's also got the Nime stereo, 8,800 bucks, but absolutely incredible. Um, it's got some interesting leathers, which I really like, the massage seats, and more importantly, uh, the Bentley Dynamic Ride, which is the air suspension and adaptive anti-roll control. And you're gonna see how well that works in just a second. 22s on this thing, 22 inch wheels, 295 tires, P0s with 16 and a half inch brakes. The fact that we're getting 22s on four seat coupes, I think, I think it's probably, it was probably a primary mission of Bentley to get 22s on here and make it look good. Interestingly, the soft convertible top is an optional metallic fabric. It has sort of this, this nice silvery sheen to it, which is pretty cool. And uh, little bits of fun, you get a three year unlimited mile warranty with one of these. So if you really wanted to call their bluff and put as many miles as you could possibly put on a car in three years, Bentley GT would be a pretty good option. Um, what else do I need to say? You save a little bit of weight, about 30 pounds versus getting the 12, and it's all out of the nose. You, uh, you're you down mm, 80 horsepower or so compared to the 12, but the zero to 60 is only a 10th difference, and I, although I haven't driven the newest 12 in the previous generation of Bentleys, I did prefer the eight to the 12 in every trim I drove it in. Uh, so let's go with the sportiest option, manual mode, and that's really it. There's not a lot of uh, selections to make with this, which is good. Here we go.
Now, despite the heft and despite the 22s and despite the all-season P0 tires, what I'm about to show you is pretty impressive. 5,313 pounds and this thing will dance going down a hill. The Bentley Dynamic Ride doing an amazing job of keeping things flat and the P-Zeros are giving me a little talking to before they break loose, which is very good. Steering is nice and direct. The last model was pretty uh, luxurious. It was soft, right? The old Bentley GTs were lovely cars. They had great materials. They looked great. You know, they aged, but they looked great. And, but they just were not that exciting to drive. A V8S Coupe could be, had its moments, yes, but overall, not the most dynamic choice. Look at this. Oh, and with the top down, you really hear those turbos spooling up. The end, the exhaust note is totally unique. I love how Volkswagen Group has managed to make each variant of the four liter engine sound totally different. The, uh, they, they all have their own character. This one sounds the most like a steamship. You ever been on a cruise? I don't really recommend that, but if you've ever been on a cruise and been up on the top deck and you can hear the exhaust whooshing out of the cruise ship's uh, you know, smokestacks, that's what this resembles. It's actually very pleasant. It's like a muted thrum, but it's good. It matches the character of the car very well. The materials in this, the interior, the, this bit of metal that goes through the wood, all the little details are so great. They are, it's what separates you know, something like a Rolex from a Seiko, honestly. It's all about the fine, the fine, fine details. And even beyond, Rolex is a bad example because those are still pretty mass produced. Um, maybe Audemars Piguet or something. Over Yump really maintains its composure. Wait till we go back the other way and you'll see how well it does there. really gets up and goes. I mean, zero to 60 and three and a half when you're in a vehicle weighing 5,300 pounds. Ooh, that was like kind of a nice burble tune. It was like a really muted burble tune. Check this out. Good turning radius, actually. Oh, not good enough. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good turning radius. No four-wheel steering. All right, we're gonna stay, keep it in manual, sport mode. There's also this sort of Bentley mode, which on the freeway, man, the, the dynamic ride, that air suspension, it's like a, just a cloud. A um, little floaty, but that's what you want, right? You're isolated, you're bumping that name stereo, name or nine, over crest, oh, oh. I mean, that was honestly, even though I said oh, oh, pretty good, that was pretty good. Up the climbing S's like VIR, the turn-in, I mean, the turn-in is super good. Wow, really scooted out of that corner. All-wheel drive, obviously, standard in all of these. And we're running the 8-speed uh, ZF-based gearbox, which I would say is in a good state of tune. This thing is so much better to drive than the old one. Oh man, the tidal wave of torque. Whoa! Yo, this thing is a giddy app. Look at this! And it's the convertible. This is the smaller engine in the heavier model. And it is a boogie city this morning. Whoa! This is brilliant. 
<laughs> really, really very good. That's a sports car right here. I really like this. You can just like shove it. Every squeeze of the throttle is just this shove of torque. That's excellent. Um, give this person a little bit of room. Um, the one thing we do notice a little bit, and I'm sensitive to it because of the Ferrari 328 being a Targa roof, it's still, it's still the one thing that keeps it from the super bank vault status that I want out of this car at this price point is that it is a convertible. It's not that it's not a rigid car, it's pretty good. It's just that there's just enough, mm, that was kind of, it was, it's, it's a burble, but it's like, it's almost a pleasant burble. It only does it in a very select situation. Um, the fact that it's a convertible, I can just tell. I can tell it's not, as refined as it could be because of the convertible. I bet if you were in the coupe, it would really feel like a bank vault, which for a $225,000 coupe, I think is probably what you want. You know what I mean? Um, is that truck gonna turn right here? Cause that would be spectacular. No, he's not. Well, you get the idea. This thing is, is, really, <laughs> is really very quick. Um, it's uh, it's it's got a really healthy engine. I don't really think you need the uh, the 12 for anything. Um, maybe for some bragging rights. I believe the 12 is like 20 20k or so uh, premium um, versus this one. So the only thing I would say, I'm not sure the first edition specification for the price of a Shelby GT350 is something that we need to have. Um, but aside from that. This thing has fabulous massage seats with a whole heated cockpit. The armrest is warm. This armrest is warm. The air scarf keeps you warm. They want you to be driving it with the top down. And I'm not gonna lie, driving it with the top down is, uh, is really a fabulous experience. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie. Is it worth the trade-off of the slight loss in rigidity? That's up to you. Do you want the tight bank vault experience or do you want the beautiful open air California cruiser experience? Honestly, even though they're expensive, I mean, this thing, it doesn't feel or look like it's gonna do what it does on the hill. And what it does on the hill would surprise a lot of people driving, quote, real sports cars. Um, there's a lot to like here. So thank you to Bentley for letting me have a go. And uh, thank you to you guys. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app.